join us. Uh, this month we have a ton of announcements, so look up here and pay attention. And finally, we will have an uprush service on Friday, June the 30th. Hey, FBC, we wanted to let you know that our youth camps are coming up this month. Junior camp will be June 5th through 9th. Crusaders camp will be June 12th through June the 16th. And senior camp will be June 26th through the 30th. Hyphen camp is going to be June 22nd through the 24th. They can register for camps by visiting flupci.com slash Florida District Children's Ministry. The church will provide transportation to and from the camp. Please feel free to visit our information desk for more information. As we begin our service, we thank you for choosing to worship with us.
God who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think, who is able to minister to every need, touch every situation, intervene in every circumstance. If you love the God we serve and you know him to be a miracle worker, give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. You can make your way back to your seats for just a moment while we go over some announcements. Oh, there's no place I'd rather be on a Sunday night. Amen. I'm so thankful we serve a miracle working God. If you know his name, if you know his name, why don't you just say it real quick. Jesus, hallelujah, we worship you and magnify you. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to go over a few quick announcements just real, real quick. Um, so if you're a guest here tonight, we welcome you to the First Pentecostal Church. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here and join us while we worship our Lord. Amen. We're so thankful that you're here. If you would, just give our guest a First Pentecostal Church welcome. A few quick announcements for the youth. Senior high campers. If you're a senior high camper, just wave your hand real quick. Wave it. We got a few out there. Amen. If you're a senior high camper, don't forget tomorrow at 5.30, the bus leaves to go to Ocala camp. And if you're late, well, tough luck. You can either drive yourself or stay home and not be a part of the fun. Amen. Also, NAYC. Everybody say NAYC. Amen. We're looking forward to that here in the next little bit. But if you are going to NAYC or you're the parent or guardian of someone going to NAYC, if you would, right after service in the upper room, they're going to be having a meeting, going over a few things regarding that. So if you would, just make your way up there after altar call um, so that can be dealt with. And if our ushers would, you can make your way to the front. And while they're making their way to the front, I know we're going to have some needs mentioned on the board behind me um, if they have those up. But if not, if you do have a need, and there they are. If you have a need as well, if it's not mentioned on the board, but you have a need or you know someone that has a need, you can just lift your hands and signify that. And if with the other hand, you can lift that up as well. And we're just going to pray for all these needs as they make their way on down to take up the offering tonight. And we're going to bless the offering, pray for every single need and pray for this service. Amen. Lord God, we magnify you. We bless your name. We worship you. We thank you, God, for everything that you are. And we know that you are a miracle worker, God, able to meet every single need. You know we have needed before we ask or think. And so, God, right now we bring these needs before you, mentioned and unmentioned, God. We pray that you would have your way in every need. Do what you would do. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. God, we pray for this offering that you would bless it and multiply it for the use of your kingdom and that you would bless this service tonight as we move forward and go to the praise and worship in the word. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy. Jesus for our families, let's speak that holy name, Jesus. Magnificent Vacation Bible School. Several children received the Holy Ghost and some were baptized in Jesus' name. And we had people get baptized this morning from the service. Brand new people. Got the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' name. 
So Zane Knighton, where art thou, Zane? He was a bio, vacation Bible school kid, and he was, where, 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 where? Oh, there, I couldn't see him, just a little bit small there. My buddy, it's so good to see you. Now stay up here with me, because we want to see that handsome face. Now turn right here, face that congregation, and stand right here with Brother Kinsey. Zion Hall, where are you, Zion? There we go. Zion, come right up here and shake my hand. It is so nice to have you in our church and your burden for Jesus and wanting to serve him with all your heart. But also for this precious soul that just was touched by the power of God this morning, Tabitha Garcia. Sister Tabitha, walk up here and receive this certificate. Yeah, that's all right, Sister Sharon. Bring her up here. It's a little strange. Tabitha, God bless you. We appreciate you so very much. Just come stand right here. Church, would you welcome these to the kingdom of God and bless the Lord and give him praise and glory and honor. Amen. God bless you. Y'all can go. I couldn't get them to stay, and now they don't want to leave. <laughs> that's good, though, isn't it? Turn to your neighbor and say, that's good. You can be seated. It is my delight and honor to introduce to you my granddaughter, Kenzie Parkey. She is our namesake. What a princess she is. She's distinguished herself at Urshan College. She is a personal assistant for Brother David Norris, who preached for us here a couple of weekends ago, and she's going to do the keynote message for tonight. And y'all pray for me. Don't pray for her. I got to follow her. She's awesome, and I know she's going to do a wonderful job. Kenzie, I love you dearly, and I bless you, and I want you to come and minister to us the Word of God. I wonder if we can give that praise up to the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for what you are doing in this service and through this congregation. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it is such an honor and a privilege to be able to worship the Lord in the house with you tonight. Um, I am never short of humbled and grateful when I get to walk into this place um, I wonder if you can turn in your Bibles to Genesis 35, 1 through 3. And while you are turning, I just want to give honor to this church's amazing leadership. My papa, Pastor Kinsey, Brother Strobel, our entire youth team, the Butterfields, the Levens, and the intentionality that you pour into each individual. I want to thank you for that. Amen. Genesis 35, 1 through 3. And God said, unto Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee in the day when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and there I will make an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Growing up, going to Sunday school, I heard the story of Jacob told many times. And it was a beautiful story that painted Jacob's life. Jacob got the birthright, and he escaped Esau, and he married the love of his life, and he won the wrestling match with God. And then he had 12 wonderful sons who always got along, and they became the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob was the man, and he was the hero of the story. But as I got older and I began reading scripture, I began to notice the extraordinary amount of affliction that he went through in between the monumental moments of his life. From the very beginning, the time that he was in his mother's womb, we see a foreshadowing of struggle in his life. And from the womb in Genesis 25, it says that Jacob and his brother Esau struggled together. 
and when they were born, Jacob was grasping the heel of his brother. We see him make a lot of mistakes, forced to flee his home because he cheated his brother out of the birthright. He was cheated by his uncle. He was forced to marry Leah before marrying his love, Rachel. He was actually running from Esau for almost 20 years. We see him wrestle with God and suffer with a limp for the rest of his life. And in the chapter right before our passage, Jacob deals with his daughter being defiled and watches his sons slay the entire city of the one that defiled her. Not quite the hero that was depicted in Sunday school. This is the Jacob that I learned so many times. He was the one who held the birthright, the father of the 12 nations of Israel. This man is supposed to be the answer to the promise given to Abraham. He is the only man recorded who wrestled with God and one being given the name of Israel. And yet we see him time and time again in affliction. And then we come to Genesis 35. God calls Jacob to Bethel, the place where Jacob first met with the presence of God. He addresses the strongholds in his family and he builds an altar before the Lord. Jacob reached a place in his life where the meaning of his name had caught up to him one too many times. You see, Jacob's name meant to supplant or to overreach, but the biblical meaning of supplant meant to deceive or one who wrongly takes the place of another. Jacob the deceiver walked through life with the weight of the journey he had walked on, the name he had carried, and the birthright that he had stolen. He lived out his dreams in deceit and instead of trusting in the Lord for blessing. And as he lived out his dreams through deceit, his dreams then deceived him because he trusted the power of his own will over the power of finding an altar before the Lord. The Old Testament in the Old Testament, an altar was built as a symbolic covenant that was made with God. It was the place where reconciliation occurred and promises was, were given. It was a place where a man could have a divine encounter with God. The purpose of an altar was to lay down a life of old and to pick up something new given by God. Jacob came to the point of his life where building an altar was the last option. He realized that in order to pick up a blessing, he first had to lay down his identity and his name. He decided to place on the altar the things of the old, and he declares, let us arise and go up to Bethel, and there I will make an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress and went with me. I think it's safe to say that everyone in this room has walked on a journey carrying a name or an identity that has been the very definition of our past. Names filled with anger, trauma, resentment, bitterness, deceit, unanswered promises. And we have forgotten about the times that God has kept us. There are moments when we have been wrestling with God, asking for a blessing and asking for a miracle, asking for a new name, and he says, okay, Jacob, your name is now Israel, one who strives with God, but you have to live up to it. Jacob race, wrestled with God, and he won. He got what he asked for. He received the new name of Israel, but just like him, we allow the shame and the affliction to weigh us down, and we limp away, forgetting that we had just had our name changed by God himself. Jacob had his name changed before, but it took an altar being built three chapters later for him to say, as for me and my house, we are going to cleanse ourselves before God and we are going to build an altar before the one who remembered us and answered us in the day of our distress. Jacob dwelt in the place of his altar and it was there that he took not only the name of Israel, but the blessing of Abraham. Part of the journey that we have to walk through is that we have to walk through some shadowed valleys and we have to endure affliction, but it is the voice of the enemy that is telling you that your name of Jacob is going to follow you into your future. That is not of God. The God that we serve is a shepherd who makes us lie down in green pastures and he leads us beside the still waters and he restores our soul.
are ones who don't hold on to the promises. Altars are for grand divine callings from a God who continuously shows up. And we don't even deserve God, but he wanted us so much that he came and he died for us so that we could take his name into eternity with us. And no, I don't deserve it, but he did it. My name was Jacob, but he has gifted me the name of Israel. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the name of Jacob does not follow me, but surely goodness and mercy follows me into the house of the Lord forever. It is from altars that we walk into promised lands and callings. In the words of Isaiah, woe is me, for I am lost, and I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then one seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth, and he said, behold, This has touched your lips and your guilt has been taken away and your sin has been atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, Lord, send me. I have stood at an altar and I have been offered a new name, but I have rejected it. I have wrestled with God and I have desired callings and birthrights given to others. I have proclaimed that I am unclean, but there came a time where I stepped up and I built an altar before God who was there with me every step of my storm and I said, send me God because I wanna follow after the call of my life and now I have his name of Israel invoked upon me and I can see that while I may be walking through a valley for a very short time, just ahead is the land of promise and calling that he has given to everyone under his name. I am not Jacob anymore. My name is Israel. I found that name at an altar, and it was at that altar that I finally received my birthright, not the birthright of my brother. I want to give you a challenge today to first find a new name at the altar, but then to catch a vision of the promised land and say, here, my Lord, send me. I wonder if we can lift our hands and our heads up to heaven and just thank him for that promise. Thank him for that altar. Lord, I give you all the glory and the honor. Thank you, God. I told y'all to pray for me. You know, for some reason, I forgot to mention to Kenzie that I'm preaching about Jacob tonight from Genesis 32. <laughs> and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go at it from a different perspective. And I just want you to hear me tonight because it's a continuation of what I talked about this morning. And it's really a continuation of what she began of what you need to leave at that altar so you can become everything God wants you to be. How many of you desire that blessing upon your life that God invokes by calling you by a new name? So I take you to Genesis 32 and 24, and here's what it says. And Jacob was left alone. There wrestled a man until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, Well, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penel, the sun rose upon him. 
He halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. My text is the blessing of brokenness. The blessing of brokenness. If you feel broken tonight, for whatever reason, you are blessed beyond measure. Because now God can use you to do something for his kingdom if you've been broken. Because a blessed man is of no use to anybody. But a blessed man who is broken is of great use to the kingdom. <laughs> Thank God for the breaking. Thank God. I, I want you right now, and I know you're just stunned a little bit because nobody wants to be broken, but you better thank God for every time God has visited you and there's been a spirit of brokenness that has come into your life as a result of the touch of God upon you. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to bless the Lord and thank him for the blessing of brokenness. I thank you, Jesus. I receive at the hand of the Lord both good and evil. And I say, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And I will give him praise. God bless you. You may be seated. Charles Finney made this comment about revival continuing in the church that to sustain revival, the church has to experience brokenness every two or three weeks. And I believe that every one of us need to experience brokenness at least once a week if we're going to stay in step and in tune with what God wants to do. When Jacob was running from Esau and headed to Laban's house, now notice what Genesis 28, 11 says. And he lighted upon a certain place. That was the Bethel that he was returning to in Genesis 35. But his first visit was in Genesis 28 and 11. And he was there all night, but the sun was set. And he took up stones and put them for pillows and lay down in a place to sleep. Now, he had the most magnificent encounter with God. And yet the Bible says the sun set on him. How in the world can you experience a sunset? When you're experiencing a ladder and angels ascending and descending upon the ladder and God manifesting himself to you with such victory and power and access and possibility. And Jacob doesn't even know he's there. He wakes up and he realizes the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. Because you see, he was headed in the wrong direction and he was headed away from God's purpose for his life. And whenever you experience God, be careful about your direction because you can experience great moves of God and still be in darkness. You say, there's no way that God can visit us and manifest himself in that dimension and then the sun set on you and yet the text says it plainly, church. And Pentecostals better wake up before it's too late. Just because you can feel God's presence in this place doesn't mean you're moving toward his purpose. You say, but I've got a prophetic word on my life. So-and-so spoke a prophecy over me. And they might be long gone to see Jesus, and that prophecy might be every bit true. But pro prophecy had birthed Jacob and brought him into existence. But that doesn't mean he's going to automatically fulfill his purpose and develop that covenant relationship that would allow God to be glorified. And we got too many Pentecostals. They, they don't mind experiencing God, but they don't want anything to do with a covenant relationship because that demands for us to become broken before the Lord. I say, I'll take the relationship. You can have all the shouting and the blessing and this and that and the other. I'll take the relationship. 
And it's time that the first Pentecostal church rises up and makes a decision. If you're walking in darkness, it may not have anything to do with God. It might be that you're trying to fulfill prophecy by your own hand of the flesh. Flesh has a lot to do with messing us up. And how many of you know that no matter how much Holy Ghost you've got, you still got flesh hanging on your bones? How many of you know you still got thoughts you don't need to be thinking and you say words you don't need to be speaking and you got attitude? I'm telling you, some of you are loaded up with attitude. (laughs) There's some people, if I could buy them for what they was worth and sell them for what they thought they was worth, I'd make billions. (laughs) You talk about flipping houses, I ought to flip people, praise (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'd, I'd be making all kind of money but you can be in church headed in the wrong direction when God offered Jacob a covenant relationship all he wanted was the promise God feed me, clothe me and house me I want housing allowance I want a clothing allowance and I want to make sure you give me a food allowance. And that was all he, he just met the creator of the universe. And all he wants is, a, you know, a door dash. <laughs> all he wants is door dash. <laughs> Have mercy. I believe we're not asking for what the Bible says we can have. We need to start asking big. We need to get bigger than DoorDash and we need to get bigger than I just want to be blessed tonight because I don't feel good and I want to feel better so I can go home and enjoy my life. I want to see the kingdom of God come. There's more to serving God than just getting material blessings. There's a kingdom purpose to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. That's why we do rule of five. That's why we build Bible schools. That's why we go overseas. That's why we minister and have missionaries come by. That's why we give. That's why we worship is we're trying to bring to pass the kingdom of God upon this earth. Jacob was a victim of unbroken ambition. And there are three works of the flesh that if you've got them operating You can't be used for God's purpose under no circumstances. First of all, Jacob was a bargainer. He said, if you'll do this, I'll do this. And if I do that, if you'll do that, I'll make sure I do this. I'll come back. If you feed me, clothe me, house me, I'll come back and pay tithes. So I'll pay tithes so you bless me. And you've got to get past that. I don't give so I can get material blessings. You know, all of this prosperity gospel preaching that you hear on the television and all of that kind of stuff that you've been listening to thinking is of God. And if you'll give you a hundred dollars and sow your seed, you're going to get a million. Well, I, I, I prophesied and spoke a million dollars into somebody's life and all I get is five dollar checks in the mail. So what, what about prosperity? There's something greater than monetary blessing. Now, you can send that check in the mail anytime you want to for as big an amount as you can put on there and it cash. But I'll tell you right now, that's not why I give. I give so the kingdom of God. I'm not here to bargain with God. I don't worship to try to manipulate God to do what I want him to do. I don't pray to try to get God to do what I want him to do. I pray so that the kingdom will come. I pray so that Jesus is glorified. Jacob was a deceiver. He represented and deceived his father by representing his brother Esau and stole the family blessing. He was a grabber, reaching for everything, wanting and desiring and lusting after what he did not have. But God's purpose goes beyond material blessings. Jacob didn't perceive the importance of God's purpose, so he was satisfied with toys and trivial and shallow rather than wanting to obtain heavenly riches. And so he delayed the blessing of what God had purposed for his life for 20 years. And how many Christians are taken up with the lesser instead of God's highest, that you would live for the utmost for his highest. 
It was the broken effect that David talked about in Psalms 51 and 8. He said, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. I would to God that everybody here would start rejoicing in their brokenness and not in their blessing. You remember the order of the breaking of the bread by Jesus. In every instance, the order was the same. He took that bread. God has taken you unto himself, and aren't you glad you belong to Jesus and you don't belong to the devil? Aren't you glad you don't belong to this world, but you belong to Jesus? Is anybody happy that God took you out of sin and brought you unto himself? How many of you are thankful that you've been brought out of the darkness and into a marvelous light? Is anybody glad God took you? He took you away from darkness. He took you away from sin. He took you away from the things of this world. I feel this so deeply in my heart, but I believe that everybody here needs to start rejoicing that you're no longer the possession of the enemy. You belong to Jesus Christ. That your new name is Israel and it's not Jacob and the old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And don't you let anybody try to tag your past onto you and make you hang it over your head. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yes, you may have done wrong yesterday, but thank God for the blood. We just issued Jesus' name, baptism certificates. That's not a game. That's for eternity. That's for eternity. Their sins have been washed away. They've been taken by God. And then he blessed it. He takes them and then he blesses that bread. It's the way he did it. In every order, he blesses it after he takes it. And then the third level of order is he broke it. So I'm blessed. Get ready. (laughs) You're blessed to be broken. Because he can't multiply you and distribute you until you're broken. Your ambition and your ego does not help God. You say, well, why do we need to be broken? All right, let me ask you this question. How many of you have got a concealed carry license? How many of you got guns at home? How many of you got handguns? What's the most powerful handgun you got? Somebody call it out. 40 who? 44 Magnum. Do you put that and let your one-year-old, two-year-old play with a 44 Magnum loaded with no safety? Now, come on, answer my question, why? They could kill you, they could kill themselves. You have no idea what you're doing when you put a 44 loaded Magnum with no safe, with the safety off and put it in their hand and say, play with it, baby, because I want you to get used to fooling with guns. No training, no nothing, just put it in their hands. And the reason you don't do that is they're not mature enough to responsibly handle that kind of a weapon. And you know why God simply does not use us is because we're not mature enough to be able to handle the blessings of God correctly. Let me set the order correct. God has blessed you so that he can bless the kingdom. He doesn't bless you for you. Could I put a moratorium on praise? Quit praising for yourself and start blessing the Lord for the next generation and for the next move of God and for what God's purpose is. Quit coming to church to try to stay out of hell. Why don't you come to church because I'm in covenant relationship and my name is Israel. I'm blessed to be broken. I'll tell you the bottom line is is God was not pleased with Jacob's method of obtaining the promises. It showed determination but not faith. Prophecy had birthed Jacob and allowed him to act access to both blessings and birthright, but only brokenness would give him the privilege of enjoying it. Jacob's wrong choices caused this sunset to happen at Bethel the first time. 
Your mistakes can hinder the flow of God's spirit and your past can give you an identity and hang a sign of shame around you to where nobody wants to forget what you've done in the past. And all Jacob needed to do was to repent of the self-life and visit his altar and leave himself there. That's all he had to do. Where self is exalted, God will not operate his eternal work. A work may be done, but it's not eternal. Jacob received an encounter with God, but the sun set because there was no repentance. There was no recognition that his behavior was unacceptable by God and not pleasing to God. His aggressive ego was not acceptable by God. And God said, I will not have it and I will not allow it and I will not use it in my kingdom. I may do what I have told you I'm going to do. I'll feed you, I'll clothe you, and I'll bless you with material blessings, but I'm not here just for those things. You see, the blessing God wanted to give Jacob, you don't understand the way that Hebrew thinking worked back then. The blessing that he was wanting to give Jacob had nothing to do with altars. It had everything to do with priesthood. When God visited him the first time, he showed him a continual, perpetual flow of angelic activity up and down that ladder. He had complete access to God that was continual 24-7, 365. My, my, my. I just want you to know that the access we have to God is not just when we come here on a Sunday night. And your access to God is not just when Lee Stone King shows up. And your access to God is not just when you're here on a Sunday morning. Your access to God is on Monday morning. And whoosh, I'm going to preach it in here tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and preach right now. I'm going to tell you, you've got access to God. I'm not after material blessings. I'm after the priesthood. Well, Shandabaya. Because if you're a priest, you don't have to depend on somebody else to get God for you. You can fall on your face in a desert and call on his name and he will be there. You can be in the worst storm and you'll see Jesus walking on the water because you got priesthood. Satamaya Ranama. Hallelujah. That's why God's got to break you. You say, okay, what is this brokenness? Show me, Brother Kinsey, so I'll understand it. I mean, let me just ask you three questions, and we'll find out whether you're broken or whether you're joking. <laughs> We've got too many joking and not enough broken. Can God correct you? Can you live without God? You don't really need him. You got everything you need. You can make it without him. And here's the simple question. Kenzie asked it so beautifully. Where is your altar? A rule of five may not be an altar. But I can guarantee you, if you don't have one, you don't have an altar. You can do the routine and not have an altar. I get that. But I can assure you now, if you don't have a routine, you will not have an altar. You got to know where you go to visit God. You know, Jacob was trying to appease Esau. And a lot of people say that he was just giving gifts to try to appease Esau, that's not what he was doing. If you trace back and understand, he stole the birthright. The birthright did not give everything that his father had to one child. That's not the birthright. The birthright is, is he got double what all the other kids got. So he got double, and then the rest of it that was left over was divided evenly among all the children. So Jacob had his portion. But he had stolen the birthright, and Jacob had to pay it back. Whew. 
My, my, my. All of those gifts he was giving Esau was not just to appease him, but was to pay the debt of his mistake. You see, we think forgiveness is going to wipe out the consequences. Mm, But when flesh is flesh, there are consequences to pay. And you got to start rejoicing in paying the consequences. Because when Jacob heard that Esau had 400 men and was coming after him, he feared for his life. And he's still manipulating. He set his family in a row. He made sure that Leah was there first. And then he put Rachel in the back and said, they're going to kill you, girl, first before they get to my baby over here. Now, you just think about that for dysfunction in your family. That's exactly what he did. He's still manipulating. This is before he went to Pernell. This is before he went to this altar. It's before God wrestled with him. He was still manipulating. He was still doing everything he could. But finally, when he got on the other side of Jabbok, he started doing what he needed to do to build his altar. He got alone with God. There's just some things you can't do in a crowd. Can I just add it and say it like this? There's just some things you can't do in a church service. I wish somebody would hear me. There's just some things you can't get in a church service. You got to get along with God or you don't have an altar. Aloneness with God gives you power to prevail in prayer successfully over the assaults of the gates of hell. Notice that a man wrestled with Jacob. Jacob did not engage the man in combat. The man engaged Jacob in combat. I've heard people say, I've been wrestling with God. That's not good news. If you're wrestling with God, that means you're resisting God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this. If I could just get Pentecost straight right now. If Pentecostals would... Listen to me. And finally, Jacob got hungry for the right thing. For the first time in his life, he's not asking for sheep. He's not asking for clothes. He's saying, I'm not letting you go till you give me the priesthood. He can have the materials. I'll give him back the birthright. All I want is the priesthood. My, 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 I feel something moving in this place right now. Men, you can lay down your leadership if you want to in the home, but I'm not going to lay down the blessing of the priesthood for anything. I'm going to have access to God. I'm going to be able to get a hold of him anytime I need him. And I say, church, I'm not interested in a bowl of soup. That's what Esau sold his birthright for and the blessing. And Jacob had spent 20 years grabbing birthrights and blessings and wives and wealth and property. And finally, he lets it all go for one thing. I want the priesthood. That's the blessing. The reason he changed his name was not to make him feel good. The reason he changed his name is because Jacob cannot be a priest. I wish somebody would listen to me right now. And if I strain too much, I'm going to blow my voice up. Ever since I've come back from Africa, I don't know what it is. I've just had an issue with my voice, but I'll get better. It's better tonight from this morning, but I was drinking tea with honey and all kinds of good stuff. Just, you know, doing the best that I can. But I've come to tell you right now that the Spirit of the Lord changed his name to give him access to God. He said, you've prevailed. So powerful was that prayer that Hosea declared that when he spake to Jacob, he spake with us. He wasn't just talking to one man. He was talking to generations down the line. You want your family to be blessed? Get the priesthood. 
and quit making excuses. I don't feel good and I'm tired and I need a choir to sing to me and I need somebody to get me in the mood. Come on, Saul, get the evil spirit up off your life. You don't need somebody to play the harp. You need to come out here with the priesthood and you need to learn to dance before your God. As we're bringing the Ark of the Covenant back home, I wish somebody would just go dance until the Ark shows up. I'm trying to bring the Ark into the house. God asked him a question. Third thing he did, first thing he did to get an altar was he got alone with God. Second thing he did is he got hungry for the right thing. But the third thing he did is he got honest with God. Remember, God asked him a question. What is thy name? The last time that question was asked, Isaac asked him. And he said, I am Esau. But he finally corrected it. (laughs) And said, I'm a no good supplanting, aggravating outfit. That ought to sit well with all of the egos of Pentecost. Go on and just admit it to God. Every last one of us are Jacobs. Quit trying to hide behind somebody else's prophetic word and be somebody else and just be who you are the aggravating self you are. Because praise God, when you admit it, now God can do something with honesty. It's the lies he can't do anything with. It's the denials he can't do anything with. But when you say I'm a loser, God, I'm messed up, then God can take the old and he can make it new. And you're not Jacob anymore. You're Israel. And God halted his thigh so he would have to limp. And no, don't ask God to heal it either. Because he's not going to. You're going to limp all the way through it. But praise God for the brokenness. I'm blessed to be broken. And you notice that before he died, he did one thing. That made all the difference when he blessed his family. The Bible says Jacob leaned on his staff and worshiped. He acknowledged, I'm not going to be healed this side of glory. And in order for me to stand up, I got to lean on my staff. But I'm going to worship even though I've got to lean. And I might be leaning here tonight, but I'm going to worship because I am blessed to be broken. (laughs) And the difference in the blessing is very simple. The first blessing he gets, he gets a blessing from Isaac. But this time, this is not the blessing of Isaac. You can be satisfied with the approval of family. You can be satisfied with the approval of man. But this preacher wants more. I want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Does anybody want the blessing of the Lord? The blessing of the Lord is the priesthood. So here's why I want you to worship. You can't be a priest if you're not a worshiper. This is why I want you to sing, even though some of you can't sing and hold a note in a bucket. But I want you to sing anyway. You say, why? Because only the singers are going to have access to God. And you need angels ascending and descending upon the ladder. Quit worrying about your circumstance. You might be in a dry place, but notice the sun set at the first time he went to Bethel. But when he went to Penel, 
and he came out a new man with a new name and the priesthood. The Bible says the sun rose upon him. Some of you thought you couldn't start over. Some of you thought you couldn't have a new beginning. I'll go ahead and shout on my own sermon. Yeah, go ahead, just sit there and let the enemy prevail. But I'm gonna get a sunrise in the house. When you start operating in your priesthood. So this week, to know God, I want you to become priest, kings and priests. That means male and female. And I want you to walk up here right now and say, I take the priesthood. I want the priesthood. Not the material blessings. I want the priesthood. Come on up here and declare it. Singers, if y'all can sing and not horse, come on up here. Get ready to sing. I want the priesthood. I want to become Israel. I want to hear what Kenzie preached and declared. She put a hurting on me tonight. I had to step it up a couple of notches here to get to a higher level. She just blew it right out of the park. I had to go out in the parking lot and get the ball. She knocked it over the fence. She's playing the bass. She got all of her musical talent from her papa (laughs) on the other side of the family. (laughs) She's got two of them there, papas, you know what I mean? Papa Parkey was an awesome man of God. I love him, loved him, and still do his, the memory of what he did for Dylan and what he has meant to to me personally in his encouragement. He was an encourager and he was always encouraging me. And I loved him for it. He was a great man of God. If you can discover the value of the priesthood, you could be anywhere in the world and you can still touch God. Your emotional condition won't matter. Your crisis won't matter. Nothing will matter if you've got the priesthood. Tabitha, God will be with you no matter where you go. She's a military girl. And she'll go wherever Uncle Sam tells her to go. I want her to stay here. Be with us. But I'm not Uncle Sam. And if I was connected, they disconnected my phone. (laughs) Disconnected. But wherever you go, Tabitha, God's going to be with you if you'll get the priesthood. And the only way I know to get it is to become broken. Let God correct you. Find your altar. Let God correct your attitude when it gets out of whack. Don't wait till you have to get to church and somebody's got to preach to you and sing to you before it gets correct. Get in your prayer closet and let your prayer closet correct. Correct. Let God know you can't make it without him. I can't make it without you. Church, would you lift your voice? Would you lift your voice? Oh, 
you to reach out and connect with somebody I want you to pray I want the priesthood and we're gonna we're gonna go at this together this isn't gonna be an individual effort this is gonna be a whole church I want this church to be a church of priests we're a nation of priests oh, hallelujah Take all I have in these hands and multiply. That's it. Come on, church. Reach out right now. All that I am and find my heart. Hallelujah. That's it. Cry out unto the Lord tonight. The altar of Oh, that we might know him. Pursue him. Passionately above and beyond anything else. That's it. Present yourself tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let the pursuit of God, let it be everything to you. I am Why don't you reach over to somebody next to you right now? Put a hand on their shoulder. Why don't you link up with somebody all over this congregation? Link up right now and call out unto the Lord in this place. Come on, just a few more minutes tonight. Why don't you entertain the presence of the Lord? Let God work tonight. There are people passionately seeking the Lord. Come on, you can receive something from the Lord tonight. You can receive a miracle from the Lord. And this kind of atmosphere, anything is possible. Anything is possible. to the end, you will fulfill your purpose in me. You won't forsake. That's it. Some of you men get around Brother McCarris tonight. We're going to pray in the Lord or strengthen him. The Lord is going to do a mighty work in his life tonight. That's it, man. Why don't you reach out? Connect with Brother McCarris tonight. Connect with him. Sister Bobby, Sister Bobby, wave your hand back there. If we could get some ladies to go around Sister Bobby. Brother Abe should be coming home, I believe, this week. But we, two weeks, but we need to pray for her. Pray for Brother A. Why don't we get some ladies around her praying that God would minister unto them to lift them up. Touch Brother Abe and touch his body tonight. That's it. Join together and believe that God can do the impossible in this place tonight. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, it's here. It's available. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Bye. 
baptized three people tonight. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, we can baptize you tonight. If you want to know Jesus, you can make